Welcome back to Enthador, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress version 0.43, and this is the budding fortress, or town, rather, of Forest Home. And <laughs> it's... I don't know what's going on. It's the third month, so I guess that means it's springtime, but there's all a bunch of red everywhere, which one usually associates with fall, or autumn, so I don't know what's going on. But I've laid the foundation for the four cornerstones of our first wall. And I'm just sitting here going, oh god, it feels so tight and constricting, but I need to get it up right away, because we can be attacked by a werebeast, for example, that could ruin our entire fortress. One of our dogs has already been killed, there's the corpse down there, by a giant wren that was flying around. In fact, let's see if there's anything currently wandering around here. Giant dingoes and a kawati. So there's a lot of stuff we need to worry about here. I haven't even checked these trees to see if there's any fruit trees. That looks like a fruit tree. Apple tree, yeah. So we can also harvest fruit from trees, which I want to do, certainly. But right now, I'm really just more concerned about staying alive. So one thing I did was I forbid all wood outside of the perimeter. Because I want the dwarves who are gathering the wood and stockpiling it to focus only on the wood that's going to make a difference in terms of our wall and inside to clean things up inside. And that's really where we're at. So what I want to show you right now, and big thanks to Jimmy Fender, he added Forest Home to the map he drew of Enthador. So as you can see here, we are starting in the overall general vicinity of the Oaken Flags, our parent civilization. And now we're going to move up towards Sand Pillar, just to give you an idea of where that is in relation to everything. And now finally, we're going to move over to Forest Home. So you can see how it all kind of goes together. And Jimmy Fender put all the different civilizations on there. I just think it's an amazing map. Thank you so much. And that hopefully gives you another sense of where we stand in the world. The next thing I want to do is there's a gentleman by the name of Jappa, and Jappa is a treasure to the Dwarf Fortress community. He worked on Isoworld, Armok Vision, Voxel Fortress, and more programs that really flesh out and make Dwarf Fortress great. You could see Isoworld and Voxel Fortress in the first episode of this series as I show off Forest Home, and you can see Armok Vision in a couple episodes of Sand Pillar. The epilogue, the final episode, is a good one to check out. Anyways, he has been doing all this for years for free. Just like the game itself is free. So what I'd like to suggest is if you can, first of all, donate to Tarn Adams, who is the developer of Door Fortress. If you can, you can do that from their Bay 12 website page. But also, if you've done that already and you want to just help with the growth and expansion of the community, and you want to see more of the really awesome tools that Jabba has put out there, I highly recommend you take a look at his Patreon, which I'm going to link to below. So again, if you're a Dwarf Fortress player, if you use these tools, if you love them as much as I do, go give it a look, see if there's any way you could help. I'm sure he'd really appreciate it, and it will do nothing but make the community better. And that's that. Thank you, Jappa, for all of those cool tools that I that I use very frequently in my episodes. So now, let's profile a dwarf. And it was suggested that I utilize Legends Viewer when profiling a dwarf so that I could see the dwarven family trees. I'm not going to do that this time because, again, we're limited to our starting seven, which means that none of them actually have family trees. But also, I noticed in the previous series that once I rename a dwarf, their family tree kind of goes away. But then... We saw some family trees at the end there when we were noticing that some of our dwarves were related to the queen of the civilization. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Maybe they fixed it in a recent version? I don't know. But in the future, when we do have dwarves that move in who have family trees, I will give it a try. And we'll see if we can look at their family through that means as well to kind of give us a better idea of the connections of all the dwarves. But let's profile one right now. So, first of all, I also want to say that we're up to 456 names. That is amazing, and thank you so much. Many of which, as you can see, were just added today, which is September the 5th, 2016. And so, that what that means, folks, at about 450, we went to about 157 with Sandpillar, 
So we have enough names for about two more forts, which is great. And then the names will probably keep coming. And if we do run out of names, what I'll do is I'll refresh the list so that everybody who's already got a name can come back and do it again. It's going to be logistically painful when that time comes around, but we'll deal with it. So we still only have these seven, but let's see who we get. 159. 159 is Silver Smurf, our broker and bookkeeper. So let's take a look at the Silver Smurfer. So Silver Smurf is fortunate enough now to have a modest office with a chest and a cabinet, as well as some quarters, which is great. That's better than what he needs. In terms of relations, again, friends with everybody, and in this case, his deity, or her, I didn't check, is Zephan, the White Focus. And Zephan most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with fire, volcanoes, painting, and inspiration. Silver Smurf is a man. He has improved his record keeping. That was very satisfying. Euphoric due to inebriation, uneasy after being unable to pray to Zephan, yet yeah, we're going to work on that. Pleasure near a fine seat. Bitter after getting into an argument, though he's friends with everyone, so I'm not sure who the argument was with. And fondness talking with a friend. He's actually gotten in two arguments, so that's something. He is 61 years old, born on the 15th of Granite in the year 96. Silver Smurf, Bomb Rekasab, likes Nice, Trifle Pewter, Red Barrel, Cotton Paper, Bolts, Millstones, Demons of Vomit for their disgusting appearance. Wow, that's the first time I've seen that one. Ratweed for their hanging leaves. The words of the style of pregnancy. Hey, there's the style of pregnancy again and the sight of the umber velvet. When possible, he prefers to consume durian wine and acorns. He absolutely detests bats. Man, he has some weird food habits. Durian wine and acorns? All right, man. So let's get this ball rolling and let's get these walls built up Let's once the corners get situated. What, what are you? Are you running off with a minecart? Oops. The Kwati is running off with the minecart. There he goes. There he goes, running off with the minecart. And we don't have any soldiers, so there's nothing we can do about it. But now he's bringing it back. Now he's running off with it again. Alright, whatever. You know, since these are right close to the wall, let's get rid of these trees as well. Now, I'm a little bit worried because they're right next to lakes. And so the wood falls in there. I'm gonna have to figure something out. I might drain these lakes. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Draining a lake is really difficult. But at the same time, I don't want them to screw around with my planning. So yeah, anything really close to the, the wall is gonna get chopped down. All right, that'll be good for now. All right. We basically just need some dwarven labor because we're, we're in a very precarious position right now. We are running out of food, as I mentioned in the last episode. We're down to 20 drinks. We are gathering food here. I really wish we can get some immigrants so that I could build a still. I'm gonna have to build one right now, and that means it's gonna take a dwarf away from wall building duty. Although no one appears to be building the walls now. It's just highly important that you guys build this wall. The Kawati is still running around with the minecart up there. Come on, guys, seriously. What's going on? Why is Door Fortress not responding? That doesn't usually happen. Oh, because it is now summer. Okay, I was worried for a minute. You know why I was worried? Because I hadn't turned on sound sense and I didn't hear the summer noise. Let's get rid of all that. 
But okay, at least the game's not crashing. That's a victory. But that this is now our third season since we've been here? So we really need to make things happen here, guys. Like a wall, for example. Yep, look at that. A bunch of... A bunch of logs fell into the lake. So the best way to get rid of a lake is to dig out the area around it and let the water spread out so it's thin enough to evaporate. That's one way of doing it. So much wood. Alright. Seriously, guys. This is... This is not working here. I need you guys to build the wall. Maybe if you can make the goblins pay for it. I mean, we have blocks. What's everybody doing here? So Nizek has no job. Actually, Nizek does have a job. We can find some more trees for him to cut down that are close to our wall, such as this one, which is inside the wall. And this one, I guess, is close enough. And that's actually pretty good on this side. I guess there's these four here. But I'd love it if you guys started building walls. We have two chickens I'd like to start egg production on too, but really a nest box is not my highest priority right now. What's everyone doing? Okay, so you're making blocks, that's fine. You're making schist crafts, which is fine. Addy isn't doing anything. Addy, we're going to ask you to... Let's see... How do we do this again? Preferences? Labor? Ah, here we go. Other jobs? Wall floor construction. Alright. And I'm doing it in-game because I forgot to load up Dwarf Therapist and I don't want to screw up the video to load it up right now, so we're just going to figure it out. Addy should start building walls now. That would be lovely. All right, look at that. Boom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's think for a minute now. Where do I want the entryway to be? I think I want it to the north. Then we can have our pyramid somewhere around here. We could build it over the brook, and we can have, like, water, like a well. That'd be interesting. That's really the only place we can build it if it's going to be inside this wall. Because it's got to have a lot of space. So yeah, maybe this corner. We'll put it in this corner here of the wall. We can either pave over the lake. Yeah, I'll figure it out when I get there. But alright, so we're going to build the wall now. So if we're going to have the opening to the north, then we're going to have solid wall in this direction here. Okay, perfect. Let's go with diorite blocks. And hopefully the doors will move the wood out of the way. It's really going to upset me if they don't. But we'll see. We have plenty of blocks, so that's good. Walls actually are pretty easy to make. Because for each square of the wall, it only requires one block. Floors, on the other hand, take up a lot of blocks because you're using a ton of them. All right, let's get that started. Let's see what Addy does. I want to see if she is successful in moving the wood out of the way. What we really need is about five or six more haulers. What's Addy up to? Constructing building, perfect. Now Nizek. I'm actually going to have you on wall building duty too. All of you, actually. Well, the culinarian, I think we should start. Well, no, we don't We don't need to cook. We just need to brew. So let's, you know, the wall is our highest priority. So let's have everyone build a wall. Okay, that's already one of your 
tasks. Perfect. Is it one of Nizek's? Was I was just looking at Nizek? I get lost sometimes. No. So let's do wall floor construction on Nizek. All right, cool. I think everybody else has it. There goes Addy. She's going to pick a random place to build a wall. And she did move the wood out of the way, so that's looking good. So now Nizek and Addy are the ones wall building. You know why? I think neither of them are set to haul. So they're doing this instead of hauling the wood. Now I wonder what's going to happen here when there's wood on all sides. Well, they appear to still be still be doing a pretty adequate job. Dwarven ingenuity, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, but we need to build a still. Just a temporary one. Let me just put it right here. And they should be gathering plants too, although I probably designated a way too huge area for them to do that. So let's um Let's remove the designation. Oops. Let's remove the designation for the vast majority of this. Let's maybe... How about everything outside where the wall is going to be? Which is everything. Alright. And the wall is being built. Let's get part two set up here. And this is going to be a pretty rare episode. You're not going to normally see me doing stuff like this, but I just kind of feel like you should get an idea of how I'm doing this, how it's all working out. And I can do numerous things to this wall. I can keep this wall and just continually build out more walls, or I can decide to tear down this wall at some point as, as a bigger or better wall is outside of it. We'll see. But we are actually kind of getting close to running out of blocks, so I'm going to let them continue to build those two while I wait for more blocks to be put together. They are doing a wonderful job. Alright, excellent. I'm pretty good with the bedroom situation for right now anyway let's all right so here's the problem we can't brew drink from plants because we don't have any plants that we can brew drinks from that's no good and he's still running around with that minecart all right you know the dwarves it's gonna make them unhappy but they're super happy right now and they can drink water i mean there's a brook here they're not gonna they're not gonna die if they run out of alcohol it's just gonna be kind of embarrassing But we do what you you gotta do. There's just crap everywhere here, man. Just wood everywhere. <laughs> the idea being that if we cut down all the trees before the elves show up, and then, then they'll be telling, okay, we have a quota now to give you, and we'll say, okay, fine, we won't cut any more trees down. We've already we've already cut down all of them. Alright. Can we get more wall? How about some horizontal wall now? 46 blocks. And what are these, like 10 each? Yeah. So we're not going to make it all the way across. All right, it's good for now. And I'm actually feeling pretty confident. I think we might have this wall up in, in good time. Only problem I've got here is that a lot of these materials are going to be outside the wall, but that's okay. And we got to close down all these workshops and rebuild them somewhere else because they're just... I mean, I could make the wall a bit longer, but, well, you know, I could do that. All right, Nizek. Let's do some uh, some chopping here. Even more wood to deal with. Hopefully the Kwati won't attack him. 
If I'm going to extend the wall, I'm going to extend it out 10 spaces. Or 11 spaces, whatever the shift click does. That way it's all even. Oh, thank God. Thank God some migrants have arrived. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that'll be the end for this episode. What we're going to do before the next episode is we're going to name all of the migrants. And we're going to put them to work hauling wood and building walls. Thank goodness. It's so nice to see them. Let's see how many we're getting. One, two, three. And a kid who's worthless. That's it. Three. And look at that, folks. Bullzome from Sandpillar has arrived. Toril Abir from Sandpillar has arrived. And Mafol, the weaver, who is not from Sandpillar. So we've already got in our first batch of migrants, we have two from Sandpillar. Which makes me nervous about Sandpillar. It's going to get conquered by the goblins. But Toril Abir and Bullzome, I've already forgotten what they're good at. They're both unassigned, so probably not much. Sorry, guys. But they are going to get some really good practice right now. Building walls and hauling wood. So yes, we have some migrants, although I would have appreciated maybe about five or six more. But we'll take what we can get. Plus we have a kid now, so we have something to feed that doesn't do anything. Ah, but whatever. Once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.